Hello once again, it's Craig Hemingway, Communications Manager for the City of Moose Jaw, and welcome to another edition of the Notorious Jawcast, the official video podcast of Canada's most notorious city, Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. Coming up, how will the city address a potentially notoriously record-breaking snow event this weekend? City Manager Jim Pufault will join us to talk about our snow operations and also fill us in on the revised frequently asked questions document we have just released. Also, Remembrance Day coming up November 11th, of course. Unlike past years, our local Royal Canadian Legion Branch 59 has been forced to alter plans to commemorate and remember our veterans. And there are many ways we all can still give and participate. Roy LeBuick from the Legion will drop in later, as will Tina Dolcetti. Tina is the children's librarian at the Moose Jaw Public Library, and in hushed tones, she'll give us the goods on how we can still check out books and utilize the wide variety of resources at our notoriously historic library in Crescent Park. Before we get to all that, a couple notes on the 2020 municipal election. We're just days away as of this taping from November 9th, and we encourage you to exercise your right to vote. By the way, 2,074 votes cast in the advance polls. That's about 850 more than voted ahead of time in 2016. And so now, Monday, November 9th is election day, and in Moose Jaw, we of course elect one mayor, six councillors, and for some of you who are also voting on pretty Prairie- directors uh, you'll vote for them as well all of the holy trinity catholic school division board positions have already been decided by acclamation and in case you didn't know there are two separate polling locations in moose jaw four polling stations in all and you can find out where you vote in case you don't know already we have the interactive poll map available on our elections page at moosejaw.ca and of course it's also right there on the city of moose jaw app the election button is right there Everything you need to know about how to vote and when to vote and where to vote is right there. Tonight, we'll have all the results for you on the City of Moose Jaw elections page as well. Transit is free on election day also. We have all of that information on the app, and there's a special election shuttle that leaves from downtown at Main and High Street starting at 835 and every 20 minutes serving the Moose Jaw Exhibition Grounds Exhibition Convention Center. So... We've done what we can to make it as easy as possible for you to vote. And of course, uh, everybody wondering what the weather is going to be like on Election Day. A forecast calling for a lot of snow starting on Sunday, especially, and through Monday. To talk about our response at the City of Moose Jaw, let's now welcome City Manager Jim Pufault. Jim, welcome to the show again. Afternoon, Craig. It's like a regular occurrence. Well, yeah, so we want to keep everybody updated on everything that's happening. There's constant change. Uh, and that is the only constant is change. And uh, of course, uh, the weather is going to change big time on us from what we understand by the forecast this weekend in a big, big way, potentially record breaking uh, with snowfall coming in. And we wanted to update uh, our residents on the city's winter maintenance policy, which did change in 2019. And we didn't have to really utilize it that much last year because there wasn't a whole lot of snowfall, but it would appear it's going to happen um, this weekend from what we can tell. And I guess we wanted to really, again, remind people of that policy, what's included. So Jim, from your perspective, what are the key points of of how this uh, impacts our residents and how it helps get rid of the snow? Well, you know, and I recall that, uh, you know, when I first came to town, that one of the issues that we talked about was a big snowstorm in 2018 that uh, I think the community was not overly enthused with the response, nor was council of snow removal. And so council asked us to look at the snow removal policy and bring back something that was more effective. And so we're glad to say that, you know, through consultation and review of what other communities do, we were able to bring back a pretty solid plan that will provide us additional resources. And and probably more of a philosophy is that we try and work as long as we can, and as long as we're legally permitted to keep people working, we keep going. And so that required that, uh, allowed us to create a night shift, which we have now in, in place for a snow event. And so we're able to go 20 hours in a day. And so I think that gives us a much better response. And the policy itself it sets up, you know, the streets that we're going to look after first, which are, of course, the, the main streets in, in Moose Jaw, so people can get around. And it really kind of follows our, uh, our road priority list in that we're trying to get people to a spot where they can get to a clear road. And so 
you know, we'll do the, the main roads, the arterials, the collectors, and then we finally get into residential. And so that all takes some time. And certainly the intent is to get our, our priority one roads done within 24 hours. And so that requires a lot of work. And, uh, you know, this storm coming this weekend will be the first, I think, real test of this new snow removal policy um, and philosophy that council asked us to do. Yeah, and we have been discussing it uh, the last few days, of course, getting prepared, watching the forecasts, and our uh, public works and utilities crews, they've been making the preparations this week, making sure that the, the machines are ready to go. Yeah, no, and certainly the, the machines getting ready to go is something we look at as soon as the last winter season is over. That's the first items that go into the queue to get repaired and fixed and ready to go. So the equipment's all ready to go. We contract out uh, uh, some of the snow removal as well. That contract is done and let and... Uh, that's ready to go too. Uh, we have people ready to go on Sunday because it looks like from our latest latest information that we just received that Sunday night seems to be the biggest uh, uh, risk for a large snowfall. And so we have resources are ready to go. Logistics have been worked out and uh, you know, we'll be, uh, we'll have the crews out and as people are sleeping on Sunday night, we'll, we'll be at work, hard at work getting the snow out of the way. Yeah, and I guess this would be a good time to remind our residents that if you don't already have the City of Moose Jaw app, uh, now would be a good time to to get it on your phone. It's free to download in the App Store. And of course, when there are, if there's any notifications related to snow or anything else, uh, we do push notifications that just immediately pop up on your phone. If there's important information, that is one of the avenues uh, we'll use to push that out. Of course, we'll get that on our website as well. And and uh, and also, you know, if there's something really big, we'll make sure we get it to the local radio station. So that's always another option for for people to get that information about our operations and if there's anything they really need to know. Absolutely. The app is, you know, is such a, a powerful tool for uh, people in the community to contact us and for us to communicate with people right to their phones. And we know nowadays, of course, that most people have a smartphone. They have it with them most of the day. And so that's an opportunity for us to say, OK, it looks like the snow's coming at six o'clock, uh, you know, and we're asking right now. and We'll be asking throughout the weekend is please get your vehicles off the streets um, and, you know, when it's a blizzard, stay home because it's, you know we'll have people out uh, watching the situation and seeing when we can put out equipment and what equipment we can put out throughout the storm. But it's important that you know unless you have a real reason to get somewhere, stay home, uh, stay on, stay off the streets because you're going to get stuck or you're going to have some kind of issues and or running equipment. And so the less be for the equipment for our people to. It's a tough situation to operate a massive grader when there's a blizzard. So, I mean, we have to, anything we can do to help our people so that they can do that job easier is really appreciated. And I think the other thing that people can do is certainly, you know, if you have a driveway or a garage, get your vehicle off the street, that also makes it easier for us and probably easier. We're gonna come and plow you in and uh, that's not gonna be the most fun thing you're gonna have when you wanna try and get your vehicle moving. Yeah, absolutely. And so if you do have to go out, of course, again, just uh, uh, exercise caution on the roads, probably be a wet, icy, those things. And of course, uh, watch out the heavy equipment when it is around, uh, give lots of space and and, and go slow around uh, our equipment. Um, we mentioned uh, the app and right now, actually, if you want to read up uh, more on our winter, winter maintenance policy and, and how that works, we do have uh, that on the app. In fact, right in the home screen of the app right now, there's a snow response button you can click and that takes you to the page with the information we've, we've put out to uh, the public uh, earlier on. So that is right there. I guess while we're on the subject of the app, we can transition to the other uh, topic we wanted to discuss, which is frequently asked questions. And uh, going back a, a couple of years ago, uh, Jim, we did release a frequently asked questions document on the city's website, but we've re-released it. New, updated information on the new FAQ. Thanks, Craig. Yeah, the uh, the FAQ is again an opportunity for us to put out information so customers can self-direct themselves to the right department the first time, get an answer at any time, night and day. As you know, the frequently asked questions is on our, on our city website. So if you're at home at night and we don't have anybody working, you can check through the web, check through the frequently asked questions and find out, you know, who you talk to, where you talk to, what's the process and going through it. And so we want to get all that information out to people. We know that there's nothing a whole lot more irritating than calling somewhere and then getting put on hold, bounced around all over the place. And so our goal, of course, is to get people to the right spot the first time. And we will ask questions, but you can help us as well. And so, I mean, for example, if you know that it's a building permit you're 
interested in talking about. It's really not engineering, it's planning and development. And so, you know, it's important that when our, our, our customer service reps, when they are taking the phone calls, if they ask you a question, they're just trying to help you and get you to the right spot the first time, because that's our goal, right? Customer service is important to us. And that was one of the things uh, we noted a couple of years ago when I first came, came to Moosja is that there really wasn't enough information out there to let people know how to interact with the city and, and ways that you could help yourself, you could self-direct, or you could help us to help you. And so it's a really important document that as we change, it needs to change with us. As we know this year, we made a change on focus on the engineering department to engineering and public works to ensure that we had better success on the work we do. Um, as we know, we spend a, a lot of money on capital projects and that needs a real focus to make sure all of that gets done in a timely fashion. And the other hand, which is capital, but we also have operations. You know, we need to remove snow as we talked about. We need to sweep, sweep streets. So, I mean, we need to have a focus on really change some of how you interact with the city. So it's not just engineering anymore. It's quite a bit spread throughout the department. So we want to get that information out to people. And again, give you a hand, uh, give them a hand and how they can interact with the city because it's to everybody's benefit to get customers to the right place the first time and be able to deal with their questions. As you know, we have upwards of 10,000 requests for service a year. We're very proud that you know, upwards of 90% of those we deal with in a really timely fashion in, in accordance with our standards, which is a response within two days, and the app is helping that along. And that's our, our intent, of course, is again, excellent customer service. That's what we're here for is to serve the public, and we want to make sure we're doing the best we can at that. Yeah, and, and the app itself is really, uh, as designed, one of the one of the ideas behind it was to reduce the call volume into City Hall and allow some of that self-direct and for people to utilize and get the message, boom, right from your fingertips. And it, it'll automatically take you to the right department as opposed to having to call in and, and try and find out that process. And already about 6,000 of those requests you mentioned have come in just through the app since, since it launched in February. So uh, really pleased with that. And we encourage everybody to get it. Uh, the app, again, not only to uh, submit an issue if you have them, but again, we've got other information about the city. You'll get notifications. It's a marvelous tool. But uh, And in fact, on the homepage of the app, we have the FAQ list right there. Click that button. It takes you right to the document, and there's everything uh, in the new, revised, frequently asked questions piece right there. Absolutely, and the uh, the app, as we talked about, is a hugely powerful tool because it allows a one-entry system from customers into the database that looks after requests for service. And so it doesn't take another person to take the information and enter it in. It's coming direct from the customers and it allows us to respond directly to the customers. So as you said, it's a really powerful tool. Um, we encourage everybody to take advantage of that app. It's a great way to communicate with us. And you know, we also have all the conventional methods to communicate as well. You can phone us, you can email us, you can drop into City Hall. I mean, everything is there available for people. And we're just, again, trying to be more of a 24-hour uh, service that takes advantage of technology. And that's what technology is here to do, is to give us a hand with things. So we're excited about the app. We love the app. It's just getting better and better every day. And finally, we'll give a quick update. Uh, water main construction, of course, with the snow coming this weekend, uh, this really is the last week of, of, of the 2020 water main replacement program. And, and happy to report that uh, over 90% is complete this year. And that's a you know, substantial change for us. We have not reached even close to 90% before, so we're very excited. And you know, a lot of that is, again, the team at, at, at the city uh, working together with council, we're all on that same team. And it was, you know, we talked about the change in our budget process to let us get, get out earlier in the year. And so with that, a good construction season, again, the change in engineering to focus strictly on construction and public works looks after maintenance, that allowed us to get over 90%. And so we're very excited by that and be able to wrap up before the snowstorm comes and button up the streets. And so we're pretty, as I said, it's a, a great accomplishment to get that much done in one year. And so, you know, if we look at back at some of our previous years, and it's part of the reason why these changes are being made is to get better at what we do. And we don't want to carry forward a massive amount of projects. And this year, we were able to analyze the information, the weather patterns, how long we may have to complete work. And we ended up not doing a block on purpose because we wouldn't be able to guarantee that we could get it cleaned up and buttoned up for the for the winter. 
and that would have caused a lot of problems to the people on that street. So, you know, it was a it was a decision we were able to make because we had time to make it. We weren't running and scrambling around trying to get things done. So, you know, again, this is a, a change that we've made to be better at what we do. And you know, proof is in the pudding. Ninety percent, over ninety percent of the cast iron work done this year, the first time in the history of the program. Yeah, and that block you mentioned is the the 900 block of, of Staticona Street East, uh, which will get completed uh, early construction season next year. And just a little bit uh, on the north part of Third Avenue Northwest is is the outstanding work we've referenced. And the other thing to note too is that through uh, we were had just got going this year a little ways, and another location got added. Uh, that wasn't anticipated coming into 2020. So that also, when you think about, you know, um, if anything delayed, you know, getting the 100% done this year, you know, we did an extra location that hadn't been banked on initially. So again, more uh, got accomplished than uh, what we thought uh, heading into this construction season. Absolutely a great point, Craig, because as we know, we add a pretty massive amount of cast iron onto the, the project through a change order earlier in the summer. And we also took into account the downtown improvement plan. And in some of the areas that worked on, we included the that work to enhance the area. As you know, our goal is to come in, fix the street, do the undergrounds, and we don't want to come back again for a long time. So this was an opportunity to get some of the aesthetics added into the project. And if you look between Safeway and Mosaic Place, uh, we were able to get that uh, boulevard put in. Uh, we consulted with the owner of Safeway and suggested that he needed to have that right in entrance. And so we're glad to be able to accommodate him and it all worked out. So it's even a hugely doubly important point is that not only did we do everything that we had budgeted, or most of what we budgeted, we also did most of what we added on in, in later in the season and including all the concrete work. So, you know, I think a very successful construction season this year. And again, it's you know, testament to the work we've been doing over the last couple of years to get our budgets done sooner, to focus in on specific projects and let the departments do what they should do and not get distracted into dealing with, oh, you know, a million other things. Like, this is your core business area. Focus, get it done. We need to we need to make that happen. And we did. City Manager Jim Pufault, thanks so much. Thank you, Craig. Our thanks again to Jim Pufault, City Manager for the City of Moose Jaw. Now, on to Remembrance Day. How can we watch the ceremony from the Royal Canadian Legion on Wednesday morning? Where do we get a poppy? To answer those questions and more, it's past president of the Royal Canadian Legion, Branch 59 in Moose Jaw, Roy LeBuick. Roy, thank you for taking some time for us here today. Well, thanks very much for inviting us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, well, we certainly want to uh, make everybody aware of the changes this year to Remembrance Day ceremonies of course, with COVID-19 affecting pretty much everything in our world, certainly it's had its impact on uh, Royal Canadian Legion. I guess, Roy, the, the, the first and, and most major change, of course, is that uh, the annual public ceremony uh, at Mosaic Place is not going to be a public ceremony, at least in terms of attendance, correct? Correct, yes. Uh, this year's uh, uh, service will be more of a, a private uh, invitation-only uh, service uh, with less, uh, at this time, less than 25 people. Uh, that is gonna take place actually at the, uh, the Moose Jaw uh, funeral home, but everybody will be able to view it if they'd like uh, by going to the uh, Moose Jaw funeral home, uh, dot com slash webcast, and we will be broadcasting it uh, over the, uh, uh, over the, the, the web uh, at uh, 1030 on, uh, starting at 1030 on uh, uh, November the 11th. So again, you can go to the Moose Jaw Funeral Home dot com slash webcast if you'd like to view this year's uh, Remembrance Day service. Well, you know, thank goodness for technology allowing you to at least be able to provide that option. And I can anticipate uh, having a pretty high volume of people wanting to to watch that and be able to pay tribute still in that manner. Yes, we're we're hoping uh, you know uh, we get a a, a good I'd say a turnout, a, a good viewership, I suppose, uh, on that day uh, starting at ten thirty. So we we still figure the uh, service will probably take you know probably about that same about forty five minutes or so, um, half an hour to forty five minutes. So it'll be uh, it'll still be a very good service. Uh, uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, I think just as much work as gone into doing this private service is what we usually do for our main service that we've done in the past. So it, our volunteers have been working very hard all the way around trying to uh, make this happen. So we're, we're really looking forward to uh, still being able to. 
we're going to get to specifics of you know changes to uh, poppy sales and know you're doing some wreath sales as well but i really did want to discuss that piece of it um what the legion has had to do to try and overcome the the challenges uh, presented by COVID 19 and as you indicated it's taken a lot of a uh, lot of effort from a lot of people to to be able to do this yes we've uh we basically had to take everything and almost put it into basically online donations uh, online sales, uh, uh, a lot of our crew uh, was not able to go to uh, uh, businesses as we have in the past for, for the donations that a lot of businesses have uh, uh, put forward, in, uh, you know, in previous years, um, you know, and the wreath sales as well, of course, uh, going door to door, they, they weren't able to do that. Uh, so a lot of that is, is, is basically gone online uh, or people phoning into the, uh, you know, into the office. Uh, and they can, you know, pay with a credit card over the phone if they would uh, like to purchase a wreath. But um, we still can do uh, donations via e-transfer at uh, rcl 59 Trust at gmail.com. Uh, so we, you know, we still still get our presence out there. Unfortunately, we just can't go door to door. <laughs> do you have any sense on uh, on the returns? We're recording this on November 4th, one week away from returns on... Um, how those online donations are coming in? I, at this time, I, I don't. Uh, I, I, I know um, donations have still been going pretty good. Um, we've had uh, a few. Uh, we've had a few checks mailed into us. Still, people doing it the old-fashioned way. I've had a few phone calls from some local businesses asking if I come pick up a check. Uh, you know, they still want to make a donation, that sort of thing. Uh, I. I believe that they're they're going okay, but it is you know it, it is something new, so it's like people got to find you again because we're not coming to them. We got to try and get them to find us. So you know we're really trying to get the word out there, you know, uh, uh, through any way means we can to let people know that they can still purchase a wreath, make an online donation, come to the office if they want to to uh, uh, drop off a check. Uh, that's not a problem. Uh, and as I say, I, I've had a few phone calls from some people that. No, I'm out and about. Ask me if I wouldn't mind stopping by picking up a check. Of course, no issue with, uh, with with that at all. Uh, we're we're more than willing to. I'm more than willing to do that. Same with some of our. You know, if, if anybody else can, we'll we'll definitely try and help out as much as we can. You touched on the wreath sales, and then they are still ongoing. Uh, what about poppies? I've well, seen I've seen indications that, that you can find them at some businesses in in town, but a little unclear exactly on on how how we can get a poppy if we want to find well, a poppy. As of the as of today, there is a list of forty eight businesses uh, that that have uh, asked for a poppy tray, um, and it's you know uh, there's the Credit Union, Ashdowns, uh, Cheese Factory, Taco Time, uh, Vintage Vinyl, Anavets, Cosmo. Uh, Murray GM, Smitty's in the Mall, Alliance Health, Park Hotel, Connexus Credit Union, Tim Hortons, Co-op Gas Bar on on the on the Ninth uh, Avenue South. Um, you know, um, just about uh, any of the mall, anywhere in the mall. Uh, Shoppers Drug Mart, uh, Bulk Barn, Walmart. Um, you know, Flats. The Brew House, uh, uh, Flat Top Automotive, CIBC, Grant Hall. So there's 48 trays out there. Uh, may have to kind of look for them a little bit, but I, I have a handwritten list. Unfortunately, I, I don't have an electronic version of the list that I'm able to share at this time, but I, I think they are going to work on something like that, maybe trying to get that on our Facebook page. I think uh, we'll, we'll make that suggestion, see if we can get that list posted somehow electronically and get that out. Uh, but yeah, there's there is still the 48. Uh, there's 48, and as I just was talking to the office a half an hour ago, um, the list is growing. So you know, chances are you'll probably come across them uh, if you you, you know uh, just be patient. You'll see them between now and the, the the 10th and the 11th of November. That's not a problem. That's good. I hope you've got on your voicemail that I'll come pick up that check. I have a sense people are call that's what that call was about right there. Somebody wants to donate money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're ringing the phones already. You know, I, not, to, not to steal from a, another organization, but that's right. Yeah, we'll come and pick up the check. So if the phones ring, not a problem at all. That that, that we don't, that's music to my ears too. That hearing that somebody wants to make a donation. So 
Um, so yeah, poppies will still be out there. And of course we will have poppies down at the branch as well. So, I mean, if you're out and about and you want to stop down, uh, our branch is still located at 268 High Street West. You can uh, uh, pick up a poppy there, or if you need some poppies, whatever, we'll be able to uh, uh, accommodate you there. Uh, same with the wreaths. Um, uh, with regards to the wreaths, again, um, if you wanted to purchase a wreath, uh, you still can do that. And I know in years previous, a lot of people have wanted to lay a wreath at the Cenotaph during our service uh, at Mosaic Place. Um, this year, what we have uh, uh, done is anybody wanting to purchase a wreath can lay the wreath themselves at any one of the uh, at five locations around Moose Jaw that we have uh, we have set up. Uh, of course, the Cenotaph at Crescent, Crescent Park, um, the uh, the Cenotaph Memorial at uh, Peacock Collegiate, and uh, the Cenotaph at either Rosedale Cemetery in the veteran section or of the old Moose Jaw Cemetery on the east side of the town or the uh at the wall at the center drive of uh sunset cemetery just south of town so if you still want to buy a wreath and you would like to go and lay it yourself you can do so uh we uh, uh um are encouraging people to do that uh being they not having a service if you wanted to purchase a wreath and you're not able to um lay the wreath yourself uh myself and a couple of other committee members uh, have volunteered our services that we would go and lay the wreath on your behalf. If anyone wishing to purchase a wreath but just can't get to any one of those locations, we'll do that for you as well. Uh, and then we'll be collecting them, of course, at the, the, the end of the day. Um, so we, we have offered that as well uh, to try and compensate for the fact that people can't go and lay a wreath personally at the service. Right. There's places in Moose Jaw that you can. Terrific. Uh, well, listen, you can uh, check out the Royal Canadian Legion, their Facebook page, uh, and, of course, uh, contact them through there. Or of course, just you know, call them up and, and uh, make any of those arrangements you would like. And, and we'll, uh, we'll add that if you go to the, the Facebook page uh, beginning November 5th, uh, there'll be some wonderful uh, veterans tributes uh, every day on the Facebook page. Isn't that right? Yes, that is correct. And if you're wanting to pay tribute to a, a veteran, a friend, a, a family member who was a veteran, by all means, please uh, submit them. Uh, you know, any questions, you know what, by all means, get in touch with the Legion. Uh, we'll, we'll try and help you out as best we can, too. But, yeah, if you've, you've got a veteran in your family or a friend, please, uh, uh, I encourage you to check it out or have their, have their uh, uh, memorial on there as well. All right, Roy Lebuick, past president of a Royal Canadian Legion uh, in Moose Jaw. Uh, one more time, Roy, the Remembrance Day service will be streamed live. Give us yeah. the address again. The address for that is, uh, of course, www.moosejawfuneralhome.com slash webcast. At 10.30 a.m. on November the 11th. Roy, thanks so much for your time, and thanks to everything, uh, and thanks for everything that you and your great team of the Legion uh, do to uh, keep veterans uh, in our hearts. Well, thank you very much. I will pass that on to all of our volunteers. Uh, they have worked very hard this last little while to uh, to make this happen, and, and uh, we're we're looking forward to uh, uh, to November the 11th. That's for sure. Thanks for inviting us, Craig. Our thanks again to Roy and every single member of the Legion, Anavets Club, and all veterans. We thank you. For your service. Now, to finish the show, when it's blizzarding outside, many like to curl up with a good book. How can we still find the books and other resources we crave from the Moose Jaw Public Library while dealing with COVID-19 challenges? Children's Library and Tina Dolcetti joins us right now to tell us more. Tina, thanks for taking some time for us. Hello, um, and welcome to the library again. Um, I'm really happy to be able to be here. Yeah, well, it's great. And I hope we aren't breaking any rules uh, with you, you know, talking at a regular volume. Oh, well, we don't have people <laughs> like for 60 feet uh, in one direction or 60 feet in the other direction. But my voice is always naturally set to loud. So there you go. <laughs> Outstanding. Well, listen, I know it's been, uh, you know, everybody's had to go through COVID-19 and and find uh, ways to keep uh, keep business going and, and keep uh keep the doors open best we can and provide uh, everything the library can provide. So can you go uh, through for us, uh, I guess, the latest from the Moose Jaw Public Library and 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 your, go over your hours and how things have, have shifted over the last little while? 
So yes, yeah, so during the pandemic, originally we had uh, we were we were we started being open for curbside in in June, and of July, actually August, I want to say we've been uh, open with book displays and we have reference uh, desk availability. And what's new is we have expanded our hours of operation from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday um, and Sunday is 1 until 5 p.m. And so basically what you can expect when you get here is is we have um, books that are available for browsing at the front and we have a reference desk available and we've got um, the ability to use some of our public service computers uh, for catalogs. I mean, sorry, not for catalog, for the internet. And we also have um, our reading room available outside. Okay, so, so yeah. No, sorry, sorry to interrupt there. Um, but so yeah, so so going in as one might have done before and just wandering around to the back and find a book, that's not available quite yet, uh, as I understand it. Not available quite yet, but we do have quite a lot of staff to be able to help you with your with your reference concerns um, and to be able to help you with and getting you exactly what you need. Terrific. Uh, and what have you and what have you noticed for uh, for book requests uh, uh, in the pandemic? Again, people have been going online and doing the book request thing. So in terms of, you know, people taking out books and other materials, what kind of uh, difference in numbers have you noticed? Well, we've noticed a lot of requests for little kids coming through. So we have a lot of uh, parents requesting items for their children to be able to be reading. Um, we have, a lot, well, we still have, we have our regulars who like really want to have their latest mystery or their latest romance novel. Um, we have, uh, we have, we have quite a lot coming through here actually in terms of requests and we even have digital collections as well. So our usage of our digital collections has shot through the roof, um, metaphorically speaking, but we have a lot of collections that we're adding. We're always buying the newest bestsellers for our digital collections, as well as our uh, bestsellers for um, uh, our videos. We have a lot of bestseller videos available on Hoopla too. So no shortage of options yet for anybody who wanted to check out uh, a favorite book, video, that sort of thing. Nope, none at all. Even <laughs> we've got video games available for browsing. So terrific for, for staff, for yourself and the rest of the staff there. Uh, obviously a lot of changes you've had, you've had to go through. Everybody managing okay? Oh yes, we've put down our social distancing stickers. We have our cleaning schedules and cleaning rotations in place. Um, as for me, when I'm out front, you'll always find me wearing one of these handy things and we've gotten quite used to wearing them. Um, we are excited to be able to have Moose Jaw come in and visit the library. Yeah, well, it is exciting and and you, uh, you're you the children's librarian and as you indicated, lots of requests for, for kids books. Have there been many issues in trying to uh, source books again that, that are in other lo locales? Well, sometimes when you're trying to order from a different branch and have that be brought in, depending on whether or not there's an outbreak there, um, you might have to you might have to be willing to wait a, bit, a little bit longer. And we also do have a quarantine period. So when you've returned your items, it sits for 24 hours just so that any of the coronavirus that would have been on there can have a natural uh, time to uh, be able to be voided from the material that you've just returned. But um, but other than that, we should we we should be we we do have um, fairly quick service. Does library track or have you ever tracked um, the types of books that are being checked out? Um, uh, and I guess I, I guess that would and I guess I'll follow that up by asking. You know, I just wonder. You know, uh, since the pandemic hit, uh, any noticeable uptake in in books? Um, uh, you know, wellness books mental wellness, people, you know, just trying to, you know, find ways to cope and get through some manage stress and those sorts of things? Oh, yes. We do have quite a lot in terms of our health collection that actually goes out, and that's quite popular. Um, we do take, uh, we do take uh, patron privacy into account quite a lot. So any, any like personal details that kind of gets deleted by our system, but it just, uh, it just registers exactly how many times a 
a book was checked out, not necessarily who checked it out, but how many times it was checked out. Well, yeah, and certainly that's not even, the, yeah, that I wouldn't ever uh, want, want to know that sort of thing. But just, yeah, just in terms of subject matter, if you ever watch oh, yes. the patterns. Oh, yes. So basically we have, uh, we have a lot of health books that go out. Um, we have quite a lot of uh, our DVDs are quite well used. And in terms of the children's department, I, for one, know that, that uh, Big Nate and Dog Man are definitely in demand. <laughs> always in demand <laughs> those must be new to the scene since my kids uh, grew up I, I i'm not familiar with big nader or, or dog man but i trust that they're splendid <laughs> yes and just plain fun you know people need a lot of stuff to be able to laugh about during this pandemic laughter can sometimes be in short supply so if you have something that brings you a little bit of uh, levity or or something that brings a little humor into your life that's that's really important too Going forward, I know you know the, the the library offers so many resources and a lot of educational programming. Um, how are you handling that, or how do you hope to handle that? Well, we have a lot of virtual programs offered by the adult department. We also have a virtual story time offered within children's. Um, so that's always with regards to pandemic preparedness. Um, we have two small in times too though for some people who are uh, craving the in-person experience so what happens with that is we have all of the mats measured out at six feet apart in our story time and we've kept the attendance kind of lower than what we would normally do but uh, we make sure to have crafts available for the kids and we make sure that everyone is socially distanced. We, uh, we do require a mask for adults at our programs and we have three masks available for adults who um, wish to uh, be able to be there with their children. And we try to have a nice, we try to have as much of a regular and kind and welcoming environment for families as much as possible. Uh, but given also pandemic restrictions, we make sure that those are in place as well for everyone's how, safety. How has attendance been for those programs? Well, it's actually looking quite promising. We've had we've had a few people come to our first one and we've had some attendance at our second one and we've had some added interest in it. So, so I know that next week we'll have double the amount of people that we were able to have this week. So small but steady and that's really important. So what are the, the key messages we want to uh, remind uh, people of going forward here? Well, we want to remind people uh, that we do, that our library is responsive to our community in terms of providing services for adults, uh, for children, but also for youths as well. And we're doing so in an online environment as well as an in-person environment, and that we are stressing the safety of our public. Fantastic. And of course, you can find uh, all the hours and information on the Moose Jaw Public Library website. Yes. Um, yes, you can. And we have our lines and links. I thought I would also take a couple minutes to mention that we have a regular uh, youth services Dungeons and Dragons group that meets on Discord uh, regularly on Wednesday nights for teens to be able to connect with each other, especially if they have um, any nerdy interests. Uh, we definitely welcome them to bring them there. Um, we've also got our adult programming available on a regularized basis. So we have uh, one of our next coming uh, programs is Your Mental Health with Dr. Gilliman, uh, a naturopathic doctor. So, um, so for the interest for that is if you're interested, it's Thursday, November 19th at 2 o'clock p.m. And that is our next adult program. And yeah. Well, well, Tina, uh, congratulations to you and everybody at the library for uh, uh, putting all the, the safety protocols in place and continuing to produce uh, just a wide range of, uh, of programs that we can take part in, in addition to uh, making sure we can get all the uh, books and other content we want to consume. Yes. Well, thank you so much for inviting me here. Craig today. It's just really important that we all continue about our lives, but we do so in a very safe and in a very thoughtful manner for, for our fellow citizens. Tina Dolcetti, Children's Librarian at the Moose Jaw Public Library. Tina, thanks again for joining us. 
Oh, well, thank you very much for having me, Craig. Our thanks to Tina, and thanks to you for watching the City of Moose Jaw's Notorious Jawcast. Remember, Election Day, November 9th. Head to moosejaw.ca slash 2020 election for everything you need to know about how to vote and when to vote and where to vote. I'm Craig Hemingway. Thanks for joining us.